Need more hostile mob drops? Well, check this out. What's up everybody, it's Broken Bones here and welcome to Redstone in a Box. Today we're going to be showing you how to build this really awesome mob farm. This mob farm has been designed for optimal efficiency in just about every single way. So let's go ahead and start with the Y value. This is down here at Y32. I'll have you guys notice that. I've actually created a whole nother world specifically just for this mob farm. That's only at Y4 right here, uh, two blocks above the bedrock. This, uh, this whole layer right here would represent where your actual uh, bedrock layer would be in your world. But uh, in mine, I've actually got this just because of the fact that it looks better. I can't stand the look of, of bedrock. But nonetheless, I have I have treated all of this layer just like it is bedrock so that way you guys don't have to do any bedrock removal and make sure that this farm can stay as efficient as possible with that uh, being in mind so let's go ahead and start here uh, the Y value being at 32 why is that important uh, Minecraft checks for mobs uh, spawns in sub chunks which uh, work in uh, layers of 16 so 16 32 uh, 48 64 you get the gist and so it checks uh, uh, from the ground up it goes check 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 and the more sub chunks you have filled up with spawnable spaces the more times the game is going to check so the fact is that we're at y32 which means it's going to check the the in in this quickest amount of time basically because it takes about 10 uh 10 spawn updates for this thing to actually fill up and it, it regardless of how many layers you have it takes about 10 spawning uh, attempts to go ahead and fill up the mob cap now with this design uh, with a single platform it fills up the quickest I have another design in another world that I've built with multiple layers and it fills up a lot slower the fact is that we're at the lowest sub chunk which means that this thing fills up as quickly as possible Meeting the mob cap as quickly as possible makes it to where this timer above can be set at the quickest amount of time possible, flushing this farm whenever it's completely full. Uh, after 10 spawning attempts, it'll go ahead and fill the entire farm up. I've done several tests on this to prove this. And uh, if you look in here, it'll go ahead and fill up the entire thing if I move away. You have to be 32 blocks away at least from the farm. And you'll see that it just fills up, and every single time you see a group of spawns in there, that's a spawning attempt. It takes 10 of those to fill the entire thing up. So Knowing that, uh, this one single layer fills up faster than if you have more layers, so that's why that works. And the other important thing is, too, is that since this is at Y32, we're pretty close to the ground. We need enough elevation for these guys to drop and fall. Now, the issue is, is that, uh... Witches are the hardest mob to kill and let's see the Y value of here I think we're at Y5 right here. So Y5 to Y32 that leaves us 27 blocks of fall That is the minimum fall distance that a witch needs to have Especially on top of these uh, magma blocks because as you see some of the witches will uh, stay alive even though they fall all the way down But just a moment later because they take damage from the magma blocks They don't have enough time to drink their uh, uh, potions and they will uh, die. Let's see here We don't have any witches here, but basically that's what happens the witches will actually stay alive for just a moment But the magma blocks go ahead and kill them and as soon as they uh, all die You'll notice that the water here pushes all their drops into the hoppers which goes into our center collection system which is brought out of the farm over here into a water stream now I've actually put a uh, lava source here just because of the fact that these two chests here filled up uh, so quickly uh, I did this in an hour-long test and it just it gets ridiculous rates the rates of this farm are as follows we get ourselves uh, 16 stacks of string 18 stacks of gunpowder 17 stacks of rotten flesh uh, 16 and a half stacks of bones, 18 stacks of arrows, uh, 17 sugar, 21 redstone, uh, 11 spider eyes, 8 bottles, 18 glowstone, and 24 sticks. That was the entire inventory count over an hour's uh, test of this thing. So this thing is actually getting really, really good rates. And so I'll go ahead and post the, the total uh, mob drop rate on the thumbnail of the video. I'll have to do those calculations, add all those together. But basically this thing is absolutely amazing. 
The fact is, is that we do have quite a lot of hoppers here in the middle, and that is to collect all of these mob drops. Now, uh, in some other designs, especially El Mangos, I've seen him build this thing up a little bit higher in the world, and he has uh, more layers in here to push the items even further to uh, to basically limit the amount of hoppers that we use. Now, uh, I'm running out of night vision here. I'm going to go ahead and drink some more night vision. So. But the issue here is that uh, we don't have any more uh, room because of the bedrock layer. So the fact is we need to have these hoppers here, and so we have all those there. And as you can see, they uh, get transported up and put into this ice stream where they do make it all the way across this gap so they can make it outside the farm for you to collect. Also, these slabs here are important. These slabs uh, create a wall that spiders have a hard time climbing on. It's not foolproof. Some spiders will climb back up, but as you notice, they don't climb back up very often. You'll see only me, maybe one or two of these guys actually climb back up on the walls, which doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, you get 100% clean out of this thing. But uh, that guy over there just climbed back up. But as you can see, out of the entire thing, only one spider climbed back up. So these slabs here are playing an important role on this farm you need these because uh, since it's a single layer most of these mobs get pushed out uh, at the same time so they push each other to the sides and you don't want them going inside because then they'll have a chance of uh, going off of the magma blocks and not onto the spawning platform now check this switch out here see how he stays alive but then he dies just a moment later. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Uh, 27 blocks is the minimum fall distance you need for that to happen. If you have uh, 26, it simply just doesn't happen. Also, I'll have you notice that I have this stone layer right here with some torches on top of it. This is actually an underground farm. You'd be building this underground, but I'm not going to be digging that out for you guys today. So I've actually put a huge uh, cap on my ceiling here. Now, if you were to pre pre uh, prepare yourself a perimeter, which by digging out a huge area so you don't have to do any cave lighting, you can just, uh, if you have a lot of TNT laying around, you can blow out the entire uh, 120 block radius around you and that'll go ahead and get rid of all the mob spawns you can go and build this thing at the bottom of the world but if you don't have that uh, basically you'd be digging a hole the size of this square right here in a diagonal fashion and these stone blocks represents where the walls would be if you were to dig this hole out right here so uh, just keep that in mind in the tutorial this would be uh, naturally an underground farm and I'll show you guys how to optimize uh, the spawning efficiency The last thing I'm going to cover is the lag efficiency of this farm. Now, because it is one layer, it's very lag efficient. Most mob farms, because of the height and how many uh, layers they have, create so much lag due to the water updates. Fact is that this has one spawning layer, so there's only one uh, layer of water updates, which doesn't create hardly any lag at all. And as you can see, my world's operating just fine, no problems at all. I'll also have you guys notice, too, that on top of the spawning layers, uh, the water not having any issues with the uh, lag. Also, the fact is, is that we don't have any dispensers in here, so that means that our redstone above only has to power a couple pistons. That's it. Just four pistons is all the redstone it takes to power this thing. So, let's go ahead and head on up here, and I'll also have you guys notice that I've designed this farm to have no redstone in the on position. Only when the water is being dispensed does this comparator clock come on, just like it is right now. But in the off state, this never turns on, and there's no redstone in the on position at all. Even down below, everything is operated by observers and single tick pulses, so nothing stays in the on position. Everything just gets a single tick. So as you can see right here, the slime blocks get spat out and the piston gets retracted just like that. So therefore, nothing has to stay extended and nothing has to stay powered. And just like that, you'll see that, uh, again, we don't use any dispensers down here. So the water gets dispensed out very nice and quickly all the way down the line. And you guys can watch that right here, which is actually pretty awesome. I love using slime blocks to dispense the water because it's one of the most efficient ways and lag-free ways of doing it. So now that we know a little bit more about the farm, let's go ahead and check out our redstone in a box. So what we have over here is we have 30 sticky pistons, one redstone block, two redstone torches, a stack of droppers, one furnace, 30 observers, 11 comparators, 48 repeaters, 12 and a half stacks of redstone, two chests, three stacks of hoppers, 48 items of your choice, 
and a bunch of torches, more than a stack, but that's all I had left for in this chest. So make sure that you have a bunch of torches. I'll show you what you're going to be doing with those later. So over here, we also have a full double chest, which is 54 stacks of stone slabs, plus three more right here, and those are going to be slabs of your choice. So that's 57 stacks of slabs of your choice, plus 19 more of a different type of slab. The different type of slab is going to make it easy for you guys to stack this wall right here in that fashion. So over here also, we have ourselves five stacks and 15 packs dice, 5 stacks and 26 melons, 3 stacks and 8 uh, slime blocks, 2 water buckets, and then also 12 and a half stacks of magma blocks. And then up here we also have ourselves 4 stacks and 35 uh, glass of your choice, and 9 stacks and 14 of blocks of your choice. To build this farm, you're going to have to get down to bedrock, so you're going to have to dig a hole at least 47 blocks wide from tip to tip. That's going to be your fall shoot. That's not including the redstone that we have here out, on the, on, out of the corners, or the redstone down here at the bottom that's going all the way out. That's just literally the stone wall that the mobs are going to be falling down into. Once you get down to the bottom, then we can go ahead and open up some of these areas to go ahead and work in and make it a little easier. But for the main dig, you're going to be digging that out 47 blocks wide from tip to tip. If you're preparing a perimeter, this farm gets quite a bit bigger because you have to have this huge roof. This roof prevents any of the light from coming in, which is 71 blocks across from tip to tip so that's a huge roof for like that but nonetheless that is the dimensions of it it's also 31 blocks uh, up from the bedrock so right here you're at Y35 which is uh, Y4 at the bedrock so that's 31 blocks up here and 38 in total for the redstone on top I'd also like to mention just before we get started with the tutorial that it is just so cool that my items get tossed over the kill chamber into another water stream that go over into my storage area. This thing is just so cool. <laughs> To get things started, you're going to need to go to Chunk Base, which is a slime finder app, and you're going to make sure that you are not inside of a slime chunk. Make sure that wherever you dig this hole, you don't have any slime chunks there. Once you've uh, discovered an area where you can go ahead and build this, you need to dig out an area that's 51 blocks wide in each direction, just like this, so a big old diamond, just like that. And you're going to dig that from the surface all the way down to bedrock. This layer here, I'll have you guys notice, is Y4. The bedrock is right here, and so this would simulate where the bedrock would be, but I've chosen to have sea lanterns just because they look a lot nicer. I don't want to be looking at bedrock during the whole tutorial. And so I've put these uh, stone walls here to simulate where your walls would be, so that way it looks a little bit similar to you. I've had some of the uh, members of the Krusty Crew come over here and help me out, so big shout out to all my friends helping me out with this uh, tutorial. So we're going to go and get started here. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your magma blocks and you're going to come over here to the corner. From this corner, you're going to go ahead and come out eight blocks, including that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what you're going to do is you're going to carry that all the way around the farm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's really quite easy. You can actually not just do that without counting. You can just start placing magma blocks and just making sure that they're one more block deeper than the other one. Once you have all of your magma blocks in, next you're going to go ahead and start digging out your farm. You're going to go ahead and take these two blocks out like this, dig out two deep right here. And so you should have a two, uh, a two wide layer all the way around your magma blocks. Once that's all dug out, next you're going to go ahead and take your melons and go ahead and stack these on top of the stone just one block outside of your magma blocks. Once you have all of your melon blocks in, next you're going to go ahead and come over to one of the corners in your farm. Uh, this is going to be a block of choice right there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and place in some slime blocks. Now, pistons can only push 12 blocks at a time. Now, here we're going to place an 11 because it fits in with our, our design. So this is going to be including that block. So that's 3, and here we have 5, 7, 9, and then 11. So the 11th block we're going to place in as a block of choice because technically we don't really need a block right there to block the water off. We can place a block right there and it'll block the water off just fine. So again we're going to go ahead and place 11 more, so or, uh, including that one. So that's 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 11. Another block of choice. And then again we'll go ahead and do that over. Uh, that's 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 11. And then that's 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 11. There we go. Uh, again, we need a block of choice right there. 
Then uh, right here at the very end, this is going to go ahead and duplicate on over. So go ahead and bring this around just like that. And let's go ahead and bring that over here. And then your block of choice goes right there. So basically, you're going to go ahead and duplicate this entire design all the way around the farm. Once you have all of your slime blocks in place, you're going to notice that one side of your farm is going to have a block of choice, and the other corners of your farm are going to have slime blocks. So this is important. We're going to reference that later. So see how we have blocks of choice and slime blocks? It's very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start over here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dig out these two blocks up here, just like this. And we're actually going to dig out uh, a couple more, just like this, on top of all the slime blocks that we just put in. We're going to go ahead and dig all these out, just like this. Okay, get on top of all those. We also need to get down behind here, just like that. And uh, go ahead and dig down one block behind all your slime blocks, just like this. Okay, go ahead and do that. And you're going to get back here as well. Back here, just like that. And you're going to get all back in here, just like this. And go ahead and dig all that out uh, behind your slime blocks. And make sure you're two blocks above your slime blocks as well. All right, and once you have all these blocks dug out of your farm, next you're going to go ahead and grab your water buckets. Uh, you'll notice that you can create an infinite water source right here in the back, and that should give you enough water to go ahead and fill these up. Over here, you're going to notice that you have these corners right here. This melon block right here, you can actually change these three out right here. You can actually replace that with a stone block if you like, and then you can replace these with blocks of your choice. Up here, you can go ahead and uh, come back up here, make yourself an infinite water source again. So all of these water pockets are never too far from any one water source. Once you have all of your water in place just like this, what you're going to do next is you're going to come over here and start placing in all of your melon blocks just like this all above here and anywhere that you have a block of choice you can go ahead and put in a block of choice and then go ahead and just fill that in just like this and go ahead and put in uh, melon blocks anywhere you have slime blocks below. So once you've placed in all of your blocks of choice and your melon blocks above your slime, next you're going to go ahead and come to the middle of your modules. So just like we have four uh, melon blocks here, you're going to come to the middle. This melon block here in the back, you're going to break that one out and put a sticky piston facing downwards just like that. You're going to do that to every module, and then over here on the ends where it's just like this, you're going to do the exact same thing, come over here, break that one out, and put in a sticky piston. Once you have all of your sticky pistons in place, all facing downwards just like this, next you need to come up on top of this area. You need to dig yourself a little hole to get into this back area right here. You need to fill this in right here with whatever block you choose. I'm going to choose stone just because of the fact that we've got tons of stone all around, so it kind of matches in. But we're going to go ahead and place this all in just like that and breaking these blocks out here as well. So that should leave you one wide skirt around the entire farm. So you should have melon blocks like that and the tops of pistons just like this. So once you've got your area all dug out in here, and then you filled in these blocks right here so it's nice and flush for yourself, uh, next you're going to go ahead and choose a side. Remember earlier I was saying we we're going to reference these uh, blocks right here? These sides right here have slime blocks in the middle. These sides right here have blocks of choice in the middle. So these are the two sides that we have to choose from. You can choose either side. It doesn't matter, just as long as it's one of the sides with blocks of your choice. You're going to go ahead and come to one of these sides, and you're going to place in a redstone torch right here here and then you're going to place redstone dust going all along the uh, stone wall just like this and then uh, go ahead and just run that around the entire farm all the way to the other side. Once you've brought your redstone from that side all the way down to this side on both sides you can go ahead and stop short right there at the very last pistons. So your redstone should be looking a little bit like this now with your one wide tunnel going all the way through with redstone all along the floor. What you need to do now is come over here back to your torch and start on both sides. You're going to go ahead and grab your repeaters and start putting in all of your repeaters. So wherever the signal ends like it does here, you can go ahead and take out these two redstone, let that go into the block and go ahead and put a repeater right there. Now you can do that just about everywhere except for, for where the signal ends on a piston. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do that. So basically uh, anywhere the signal ends, like I said, just go ahead and place a repeater, put it into the block. Uh, this one here, we're going to go ahead and break that one out. It's going to go into that block. And then we're going to go out like this. 
uh, I believe right here our signal ends right before the piston so we cannot just put a repeater here because that uh, block right there is actually gonna bud that piston so we can't do that so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go just like this and go ahead and continue that just around just like so so now we're gonna go ahead and continue all the way down the line where's the signal end it ends right here let's go ahead and put another repeater in just like that and I believe that almost takes us to the end. We need to go ahead and put one more repeater in, just like that. And now you need to do the exact same thing for the other side. Once you have all of your repeaters in on both sides, go ahead and come back to the original side you started on with your redstone torch and go ahead and break this out. Let's go ahead and break that guy out. And you should see that all of your water gets dispensed just like this and there are no empty spaces left on your magma block pad. So once you've uh, successfully completed this, uh, your redstone is all done. So let's go ahead and shut that back up just for now. We'll go ahead and close that all up. And actually what you can do uh, to prevent the lag from this, instead of having redstone all in the on position, we can actually just give it a one tick pulse, which is quite easy with an observer uh, that's in the material list. So if we have an observer just like this, we should be able to lay that down and you'll see that that'll go ahead and give a one tick pulse without actually having all this redstone in the on position. And uh, the pistons will be able to retract, but also to uh, displace the uh, slime blocks, which uh, <laughs> reduce the amount of lag. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get some hoppers in place. So if the first thing we need to do is we need to identify the co the center of our farm, which can be easily done just by looking at the uh, blocks here in the corners and then bringing yourself into the this row and making sure that this way we're in the center over here. So this is the center block right there. So that's the center block. You can see that we're in the center row right here and we're also in the center row right here which brings us to the center row on every single side which is perfect. So that means that we're in the center of the farm. From this point we're going to go ahead and crouch place hoppers out to the corner of the farm. We're going to do this on all four sides. So you're going to have this big old long arm coming all the way to the outside of your magma blocks down here and that's going to go all the way into the corner right here just like this alright so you're gonna do that on all four sides and then for each arm each arm gets one of these so you're gonna go out to the one one side it doesn't matter if you go left or right but as long as uh, you only do this for one arm so each arm goes just like this you're gonna have hoppers leading into the side of it uh, too wide on the outside of your magma box you're gonna do that all the way around to this side and then you're gonna stop because this side's gonna drain into the arm that you're gonna make right here so again you're gonna go ahead and make four arms of hoppers leading out to the outside connect one side up to each uh, line of hoppers so each uh, four lines of hoppers is collected uh, collecting the items from one of the sides so to make my point very clear, this hopper stream is going all the way over that way and leading into this leg right there. So that's going into the center. And this leg right here is completely separate from that one. They are not leading into each other. And same thing goes for that one in all four of them. All four uh, hopper streams should be independent of each other. And once you have all of your hoppers in place like this, you're going to go ahead and come on top of these guys and place in droppers on top of all these guys. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to leave the last two here on the end next to your magma blocks empty so that way the mob drops can actually go inside and get collected by the hoppers. You're going to bring these all the way down to the center just like this on all four sides. And like I was saying earlier, only one side of hoppers should be going into one leg. This side should be going to this leg and so on and so forth for all the rest. So once you have that all completed, next you need to go ahead and choose a side to start on. Now, uh, the redstone that you chose to start on, this is the side that uh, that we added with the uh, redstone torch in the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come to the opposite side because over there we actually have no redstone. So this is the area that we have uh, for our water stream for the items to actually get pushed out of the farm. So that's important because we're actually going to go ahead and work off this hopper stream right here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to break that last hopper right there and we're going to put one in uh, dropper facing in the upwards position just like that. Now what we need to do is we need to redirect these three hopper streams into this guy but we also need to leave one of the sides open for some of our redstone. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to break this hopper out just like this and we're going to need, uh, we need a hopper in our inventory here. Let's go and get that guy. What we need to do is we need to crouch place this guy into the side and then go ahead and bring this guy into this side as well and then same thing right there so these two hopper streams are going to lean into one hopper right here this uh, one hopper stream is going to come out to the side come into this side and this hopper stream is going to come into here so this has three feeds coming into it because the last side we actually need to go ahead and put in some blocks like this we're going to go ahead and put in a uh, comparator right there and then a repeater down just like that that's going to go into a sticky piston right there 
and then we're going to have a observer facing just like this. Now catty corner to that one, we're going to go ahead and have another observer facing just like that. So when that, uh, when that gets extended, that'll go ahead and create a, an observer clock, which will create a, a one tick pulse. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to go ahead and come over with a few blocks just like this, and uh, go ahead and put in a repeater set to two ticks just like that and that's going to go ahead and go into another observer just like this we can go ahead and break that block out here and then uh, you're going to have to get down here in this position to go ahead and get yourself an observer coming off of this direction and then facing downwards to that dropper right there so uh, let's go ahead and uh, replace that block here let's go ahead and do that alright let's go ahead and get that glass block back in our inventory here there we go all right, so that is our dropper powered now. Now, in order to uh, cover these back up, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our droppers again. We're going to put these back on top of these guys right here. And then because uh, this is getting powered, this last one right here, we're going to be placing a furnace so we don't get any extra clicking noises, even though that doesn't really matter. It just creates less lag. So uh, this is going to go ahead and power up once that has any items in it. So as you should see, you should be able to power this and any amount of items that go in there, you should be able to see that that's going to go ahead and spit out its items. But they're all going to come out the side, which isn't particularly well, which is what our glass is for. So we're going to go ahead and start putting in our dropper vader. So the first thing we need to do is cover that dropper with a 3x3 three three area all the way around with uh, solid blocks like this. So they can be glass, they can be transparent. I'm choosing glass because I like watching all my items go up. So we're going to go ahead and cover this entire 3x3 three three area just like this all the way around and you're going to go around the, the the observers just like that and then once you get above everything it can be a solid 3x3 three three area of glass and you're going to take this all the way up to Y26. So you're going to have to grab your map go ahead and throw that in your offhand so we can see our Y value. We're going to bring this glass all the way up to Y26 up here just like this. Let's see that's Y25, Y26. So you want to bring that glass pillar all the way up here. Once you've got your glass pillar in place, go ahead and come back down to your dropper and test your system out. You should see that all of your items go up through the top. Any amount of items that go in there, they should all rise up here, no problem, and then come out the top. Now we need to go ahead and start with the collection system, which is going to go ahead and transfer these items out of the farm. Now, like I was saying earlier, it's important that you go ahead and reference the side that has no redstone over here. This is why we had these. Uh, we had to start here and over here. So now our uh, water stream is actually going to get collected right out over here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go gra grab some uh, packed ice here. There we go. Let's grab some packed ice. And we're going to start that coming in right here. We're actually going to come right above that block and come in just one, cutting this uh, one area right here off. So we're going to go ahead and bring this out all the way to wherever you want your storage area to be. It doesn't really matter. Go ahead and bring that all the way out. And then go ahead and get yourself a hopper and place this in here just like this with a chest. Let's go ahead and get a chest in here just like that. Let's place in a few extra blocks in here just like that. All right. So we're going to place in a hopper just like this. And then we're going to place in a chest right here just like that. There we go. All right. So there's your storage system. And then uh, you can go ahead and expand that. At the end of the video, I'll include a link to my uh, Shulkerbox Storage Solutions video. You, there's tons of ways that you can actually do the storage because I know that you guys are going to probably want more than just a single chest. But this is where your storage would take place at. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. Now you're going to go ahead and bring glass all the way around to the front here. So that way none of the items fall out. Go ahead and bring that all the way up and around just like this. And then out here at the end, we need to do a little something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some temporary blocks right here. We're going to step on up, and these are going to be temporary too. All right, so what we need to do now is we actually need to break a block out like right here, just a few blocks away from the end. Go ahead and grab your water bucket, just like this, and go ahead and place your water in on top of your ice. So you'll see that that flows in one direction and doesn't flow backwards, so now we can actually break all this out. That's why you needed that. Those are just temporary to trick the water into flowing in one direction. So now we can actually place back our ice. The water will continue to flow in that direction, and it'll never flow backwards, so that way when our items get uh, shot out, they go in this direction. All right, so next we need to go ahead and build the water stream that's going to connect up to our, our uh, glass tower and throw the items into this water stream. And that's going to go ahead and continue off five blocks away from here. So we're going to count five blocks from the edge right underneath our water stream. So here's one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth one, we're going to start pillaring up. We're going to pillar all the way up to Y26, the same as our uh, glass uh tower over there. So there's Y26. You can go ahead and break out all these temporary pillar blocks down here. Go ahead and break all these out. 
And then once you have that, oops, I uh, broke that one too. Uh, there we go. And then once you have that in, you can go ahead and bring that uh, ice block all the way back to your glass back here. Go ahead and bring a straight path all the way back, just like this. Uh, there we go. Then you can go ahead and take ice. You're going to place one block there in the back, and then you're going to continue this around, just like this, and bring this all the way around your ice, just like so. And you're going to leave the front open, so you're going to bring this all down the side, but you're going to leave this side open just like that. You're going to go ahead and place a temporary block in there to get yourself started on the other side, but you're going to break it out so either that's empty. And bring this all the way back to here, continue out and around the area just like that, just like so. There we go. Go ahead and place in your water right here. That'll go ahead and continue out this way, out to there. Next, we need to go ahead and count uh, six blocks in from the edge over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Break that block out, come out over two more, place in some water, replace our ice block, and then that should flow out to the very edge right there and not flow backwards. And you should see that if you have any amount of items, the problem is, like I was saying, that the items will clump up and they'll miss. So if even if you throw a full stack, in here, let's go ahead and throw the full entire stack in there, which is as clumped up as they could possibly be. Uh, they will still make the entire trip all the way out and over the edge. Don't forget to come over here. You're going to place some glass on top of your water so none of your items fly out. So go ahead and get this all buttoned up just like that, uh, all the way around. Once you're done doing that, go ahead and come over here to this glass block that you placed in. This is the direct center of your farm. You're going to come up to Y32 off of that block, just like this, to Y32. You go and break out your temporary blocks down below. Down off of each side, you're going to be placing melon blocks, and you're going to take these out 11 blocks each. So that's uh, including this one, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then a block of choice. Then we're going to grab our packed ice and come out 7 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then our slabs and place one in. Over here, we're going to do the same thing off both of these sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oop, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. And then our slab. And then we can go ahead and 45 connect these just like this. One uh, all the way across, just like that. And then we can grab our slabs and place these in the corners, just like that. So we're going to place our slabs in all the way across, and then we can fill that in with packed ice. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, bring this uh, other mound block out. So we're going to count, including that one. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then a block of choice, 7 packed ice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then a slab. And then the same thing off of this side. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then our slab. Connect these up uh, diagonally just like this. All the way around. And then later on we can fill that in. Put in our slabs at the edges just like this. Alright. Now we're going to go ahead and bring this down and around just like that. We can bring that all the way across. We can do the same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Bring that diagonally over here. Bring that down over here, just like that. You can place a block in the corner, just like so. So your slabs will meet up just like this in the corners, just like that. And then uh, over here in these corners, you can place in a block of choice all around here, just like that. So now what you need to do is you need to go ahead and duplicate this all the way around your farm for the other two legs and then fill the entire thing in with packed ice and border it all with slabs. Once you've got your whole platform in place just like this, next you need to go ahead and come into the center of your farm. Uh, right here in the very middle you're going to pillar up five blocks. You're going to go one, two, three, four, and five just like this. Break out these other temporary ones right here and place yourself in an observer in the downwards position just like that and you can break out that temporary block. Down here you can place another block of choice down there and then two melon blocks in here just like that. On the side of these, this uh, block of choice you can go ahead and put in four sticky pistons facing in the downwards position. And then off those sticky pistons above all of your melon blocks which should be 11 in total you should be able to place in slime and then a 12th block will go right there on the end. You need to go ahead and complete that up around for all the sides and then once you're done doing that you're going to go ahead and come off the sides of these pistons here with a row of blocks. You're going to go them all the way around just like this and uh, put a temporary block there just like that to get yourself out here. Go ahead and bring this all the way around. And until that's completely uh, encased, just like that, you're going to grab your water, okay? And you're going to come somewhere in the middle, doesn't really matter, as long as it reaches both sides. 
Once you have all of your slime blocks arms in place with your water on top, next go ahead and come over here to your observer and test the farm. Go ahead and place a block on top and you should see that all of your water gets dispersed out evenly along all the edges without overflowing anywhere. And if it's not reaching the edges or overflowing, you need to fix that now before you move forward. So once that's done, go ahead and remove that block and get your water to go ahead and uh, stay up there just like that. And actually, if you want to, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and leave the water dispensed. Uh, right now, we're going to be putting on a roof, which is going to make it really dark under here. And it's going to make it to where mobs are going to spawn. So uh, you can go ahead and work from the top so you're not fighting the water. But that way, no, none of the mobs will be spawning either. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and border the entire thing with slabs. So you're going to go ahead and come up uh, here with slabs just like this. All the way around here. I'm going to cover these uh, water troughs just like this. Come around here with all of your slabs all the way around. And then when you come out to the side of the farm, what we're going to be doing out here is we're going to bring our slabs all the way out uh, over here, like this to the edge of the farm right here. Now, if you've dug a hole, you can go ahead and reach these slabs out to the edge of your hole. Now, if you've prepared a perimeter where you've blown everything up and there's no no nothing around at all, you're going to have to extend these slabs out 15 more blocks beyond the edge of your farm. You're going to have to do that on all four sides and then connect them up diagonally just like this other roof over here that I have prepared for you. Once you've laid out your entire area where you've brought these slabs out 15 more blocks beyond the edge of your farm, you can go ahead and connect up the edges diagonally like this to get yourself laid out and fill in the entire surface. So, once you have all of your slabs all in place up here, next you're going to go ahead and choose the opposite corner that you put your uh, water uh, uh, stream in over there, your ice stream. So what you're going to do is on the opposite side over here, you're going to come right over here to this area. You're going to place in a repeater just like that. And then you're going to place a block in here like this, and in survival mode you'd have to pillar up. So I'm just going to fly up here, and you're going to get up to this block right there. Once you reach that block, you're going to go ahead and break that one out, and you can place in a block of choice so you can know which one that is. And actually we can place in a dropper just like this. That'll go ahead and activate the redstone up there. Then from this point, we can go ahead and place in an observer facing downwards all the way down, just like this. I mean, all the way down the line, all the way like this. And you'll see that that'll go ahead and activate this system, which will uh, activate the water flowing. So let's go ahead and get that down here like this. You might have to break a few blocks out to get that pointed straight down, just like that. And as you can see, that goes ahead and activates the system, which clears up the water. Let's go ahead and replace that block here. So now what we need to do is we actually need to have a second pulse go in because originally what's going to happen is it's going to release the water and then we need it to close back up. So that's going to require two pulses. And how we're going to get that is we're going to go ahead and come off the side of this observer right here with another observer right there with a block on its face. We're going to come down just by one block, stair stepping just like this right here. And then we can go ahead and break that one out. Put redstone dust on top of that one. Down here we're going to go ahead and do this little jig jog right here. We're going to do this uh, little... Uh, deal here where we come out like this and then we step on up a few blocks just like this. We're going to come make four of these little indentions just like this. So there's one, two, three, and then four just like that. There we go. We're going to put some redstone dust right there. And then down here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and place some blocks all along down here just like that. And then you can break the ones out in between right here just like so. And then you can go ahead and put in some repeaters in their places and set these all to four ticks. So you're going to place uh, repeaters all in here, along all down there, all up here in these indentions. Set them all to four ticks just like that. Uh, so you're going to do that all the way around going in, the, uh, in this direction right here. They're going to face this way up here and turn back around and face that way down here. Over here you're going to place in a sticky piston just like that with a block on top. And then once you have all your repeaters in, that's that done. So once you have all of your repeaters in place, you should have four on top, five on bottom, all looking just like that. And to test this guy out, we're going to go ahead and come on up here to our dropper. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our water gets dispensed and then it gets shut back up. So right here, you can go ahead and look right at this slab and place an observer in that direction. That should go ahead and power that dropper there just for a split second. You should see that the water gets dispensed. And here in just a few seconds, it closes right back up. Once you've tested your water system, go ahead and break that observer. You don't need that guy anymore. Next, we're going to go ahead and come on over here to this observer and start working at this point. 
So what we need to do now is in reference to our dropper over there, uh, that's going to be my right hand side. So we're going to go ahead and place in two hoppers just like this, starting right there, and one hanging off to the right hand side just like this. So we're going to go ahead and place these in just like so. Off to the side over here, you're going to need a comparator. So go ahead and break this block out just like that and put yourself in a comparator. Over here, you're going to put in a block of choice. And over here off to the side, you're going to put in some redstone. Then over here, you're going to go ahead and place in a sticky piston with a redstone block on its face. And now you're going to go ahead and duplicate that whole thing over here again. So go ahead and put in your comparator, block of choice, block of choice, and then your uh, sticky piston out to the side, just like this. There we go. Redstone dust, and then your comparator, just like so. And then off to the side right here, you're going to put in a redstone torch. Now you can also grab uh, 48 items of your choice. Let's go ahead and divvy these up here. Let's go ahead and get half that. There we go. So 48 items of your choice. Go ahead and put these in the system, and that'll go ahead and start pulsing back and forth. And then what you want to do on top of that is go ahead and cover your hoppers with some droppers to get rid of the lag from these guys. So once you have your hopper clock in, next we need to go ahead and wire this redstone torch up to this observer and to that dropper over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the observer. We're going to come up by two blocks coming out just like this, and that's going to step up into a block just like so, like that. We're going to come over here off to this side and come out just like so. Put in a repeater right here, two dots of redstone dust right there. This is going to step up into a block as well, right here, and that's going to be in this L shape, just like that, with a sticky piston facing down right towards our block on top of our observer. That's what's going to activate our farm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come off of this block here by five more blocks, just like that. Go ahead and bring this all the way around, like so. You're going to place redstone dust in this L shape right here, and then you're going to do it again uh, over here, like this, and then uh, two more like that. This repeater also needs to go on two ticks, like so. You need to place uh, comparators down in this fashion with a block of choice right there. And then also some more comparators in this direction, filling in the gaps like that. That'll go ahead and operate that circuit. And as you can see, when this uh, pulses, that'll go ahead and activate that uh, block right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and continue this circuit out right here. And we're going to continue over to our dropper over there. So we need to take an output from that block, which is going to go into a repeater just like this. That's going to step up into a block like so with a redstone torch on top. That's going to have a block coming out to the side with a repeater coming out of that one. That's going to step up into a sticky piston with a block on top. That's going to go ahead and come out to the side and we're going to stair step on down all the way down to our slabs down below. So we can go ahead and go just like this and then from here on out we can go and break the slabs out in this uh, trail right here and replace these with uh, whole blocks just like that. There we go. And then from here we can go ahead and uh, continue this out too. Go ahead and break these slabs out as well and replace these all with uh, whole blocks just like this for your redstone to go on top of. So once you come back to this part right here, go ahead and place in yourself a repeater. Put in all, all that redstone dust all the way up to your dropper just like that. That should reach all the way out there. And same thing with your redstone dust behind your repeater coming all the way back up to your monostable circuit. Once you have all of your redstone in place, if you want to install an on-off switch, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and power this piston right here. You can, I'm going to throw a lever in there. You can put throw it in the on position, and that'll stop the entire farm and the and the hopper clock. So uh, you can uh, run power into that from an AFK tower, however you like, uh, whatever you want to do. But you need to run power into that piston, and that'll go ahead and turn the entire farm off. So uh, once that's done, you need to go ahead and grab your torches. Make sure that you light up everything around your farm. Make sure you light up anywhere there's redstone so you don't get any lighting updates and no mobs will spawn anywhere. So make sure you have everything nicely lit up all around here. Also, you need to come down below here too as well. You need to come down here to your ice path. You need to put in a torch right here at the end. That uh, light should... Uh, Go ahead and illuminate all that so that way no mobs will spawn and it shouldn't do any harm up here as far as lighting. Uh, also we need to come down here. We need to put on some lighting down here on top of our droppers and our circuits down here because these will go ahead and catch mobs too. Let's go ahead and put in a torch on top of these droppers just like this. That will go ahead and keep all the mob spawns out of here. We'd go like that. There we go. <clears throat> and also uh, down below you're going to have uh, bedrock so you're going to want to put torches all down here as well because you won't have an illuminated floor like I have so you're going to make sure to cover that all up as well. And once you've done that, 
Uh, you also probably need to go ahead and come on in here, uh, torch all this up too. Make sure all of your redstone is all torched up on the inside as well. Make sure you have all those in so you bring all those torches all the way around the system. And once you have that all done, we can go ahead and test out our farm. So let's go ahead and get all the lighting done so none of the mobs spawn in the wrong spots. And we'll go ahead and turn on uh, the hard difficulty. Once you've done all of your redstone on top and you've got all your lighting all done all the way around your farm, next let's go ahead and test this thing out. So let's go ahead and turn on our difficulty all the way to hard and make sure that no mob spawns uh, where they're not supposed to be. So they should be spawning nowhere else except for on the platform. So as you can see that's starting to spawn in here. But we have no mobs in or around the farm anywhere else. They're only spawning on our platform which is very very important. You don't want them spawning on top, not underneath, nowhere else except for on the platform. So here in just a moment, the uh, water is going to go ahead and start pushing these guys off the edge. You should see that they should all make it onto the platform. So they're all going to die just like that. And then uh, once that water is closed up, here in just a moment, that water is going to dispense and flush all the items into the hopper streams. Now at this point, you should see that your uh, dispenser down here should be functioning here in just a moment once the items make it in. As you can see, that's going to start dispensing item ups into your uh, item stream up here which is going to go ahead and start flowing all the way across the stream and make it down into your collection system just like this right there and all those items should go ahead and make it over to your chest now at this point you're pretty much done you don't have to do the rest of it but you can if you like uh, I recommend putting in slabs all the way around your farm there's so many mobs on this farm sometimes that they can't push each other off the killing platform so that just ensures that no nothing makes it off the killing platform and everything makes it onto the magma blocks so if to do that what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and probably change your difficulty back to uh, peaceful just so you don't have to deal with the mobs again but what you would do is you would go ahead and uh, probably pillar up in survival mode from the bottom down here you'd have to pillar up and it's easier to work with these slabs from the bottom now because it's so dark I'm going to be drinking a night vision potion for the uh, for the clips let's go ahead and get that in here so you guys can see better there we are so this is where your second types of slabs come in so I have my stone slabs and my stone brick slabs and the reason why that's easier is because when you place them down they automatically give each other that one uh, half slab block of space in between so it makes it really easy for placing them but however if you come down here like this I'll show you guys what happens if you don't place them from, from the top if you go like this okay and uh, in that layer, if we were to place uh, place them from the top, they don't have that gap, and that's because of the the way that they're layered. So it's just much much easier to go ahead and work with these from the top down, just like this, because then they do have that one uh, half block gap in between. So what you're going to do is you're just going to work your way down your pillar, filling up as much of the slab uh, wall as you can all the way around your farm. Once you've got your slab wall all in place going all the way down, uh, go ahead and come back over here to your water stream and you're going to break these two glass blocks out here right here on the end. That'll go ahead and make sure that nothing gets stuck on the sides over there. So now you should see that everything is going to go ahead and fall down the edges just fine, just like this. And even over here in these indentations right here, you should see that nothing should uh, be able to fall pass anywhere except for the magma blocks and even if they're uh, a witch or something like that that can still stay alive they're not going to get past the magma blocks because they can't get past that wall there so that uh, that's pretty much the farm done everything's uh, working let's go ahead and turn on our hard difficulty mode let's go ahead and double check everything back up away from the farm everything's starting to spawn in there we are alright things gonna flush here probably pretty soon there we go, we get the flush. Mobs are now falling off the sides, which is a wonderful sight. Everything is getting down there and getting uh, getting turned into items. The water is going to turn on and dispense the items over into the hopper systems, just like that. And then all of our items are going to make it over here into our uh, item elevator, just like this. Right there, items are starting to go up there now. Let's go ahead and head back out of the farm here. And now items should be making it into our... Uh, item stream over here just like this let's go ahead and see where that's at that's uh, right here so, yes yeah, so a bunch of items are coming out of the farm now so that's awesome and everything's going right into our storage system just like so 
Once you're done building your farm, the one of the last things you can do is light up all the surrounding caves if you haven't pr uh, prepared a perimeter around your farm. So if you have a bunch of caves, you're going to have to go through with a bunch of torches and make sure they're all lit. This can be sometimes pretty frustrating if you end up going into a big area like this where you've got tons of lava beneath you and you've got tons of high cliffs above you that are hard to reach and dangerous to get to. So in my inventory, I've included some of the things that I'd recommend bringing with you if you, if you have these available to you. I'd make sure that you have some ender pearls so you can get up to high spots like these pretty easily. Also, make sure you have tons of torches. Make sure you have tons of those you don't want to run out while you're in here. Make sure you have a bucket of water so you can get back down safely. Also, turn all this lava into obsidian so you can get down safely without landing in it. Make sure you have tons of food on you so you don't starve. Make sure you have potions on you. In case you do land in lava, you do have fire resistance potions on you. And make sure you have the proper gear on. Make sure you have all the proper uh, gear like uh, feather falling and fire resistance are two good ones for doing this. Also having the proper tools like a pickaxe and a shovel. Also making sure that you can also uh, dig out some of the ores because while you're doing this you're going to run into some really cool ores. And also bring a bed because while you're doing this you're going to want to make sure that you can do the x-ray glitch and make sure that you can get all the caves because if you leave one cave unlit it's going to really dim the efficiency of your farm. Also, you'll see in my offhand, I have a map. You're going to want to make sure that you do have a map so you can track the coordinates from your uh, farm. You want to make sure that you're 128 blocks in every direction away from your farm, making sure that everything is lit up within that radius. Uh, once you have all that done, then you can uh, go ahead and get your bed, and I'll show you guys how to do a little x-ray glitch. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and find a cliff just like this one, or whatever, any area, and just go ahead and put in a uh, three high by two wide area just like this, two deep. Come around and turn in backwards so your bed's facing just like that. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and uh, replace those blocks just like this, and then you're going to sleep in the bed. Let's go ahead and turn it to nighttime. Set night. There we go. Alright, then you're going to sleep in your bed, and you're going to notice how you can see every single cave that's in front of us. And if you exit the bed soon enough, you can actually uh, get out of that. There we go. Let's go ahead and get our bed back here. And so, uh, yeah, that's how you do the x-ray glitch. It's pretty simple. If you get out of it in time, it's pretty. It's not It's not bad, and you can actually redo it. You can spam the, uh, the sleep button. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that here really quick. Let's go ahead and do that here again, uh, that you can actually just exit the the bed and uh, just do that multiple times. So let's go ahead and get that in. Let's go ahead and do that. I got gold blocks. That's cool. All right, so there's our bed. Let's go ahead and sleep in it. So as you can see, we have a, a an area right next to us that we can clearly see. And if you spam that, you can stay in a pretty clear vision just like that. If you just keep on spamming it, it doesn't really ever get a chance to go gray like this. So you can actually get a pretty good vision. And all you have to do now is just go actually tunnel over to that area just like this right there grab your torches and go ahead and do the entire area inside and make sure everything's lit up even in these water areas make sure that everything's lit up because there's these little caves and uh, little uh, ledges and things like that for things to spawn on so make sure everything is clearly lit up and uh, once you're done doing that the last thing you can actually do to rev up the uh, your farm is actually grab some slabs and look for any of the surrounding slime chunks uh, you guys have noticed that we've actually had a few slimes uh, here in the uh, in the video just earlier there was one walking around down here somewhere point being is that I'll go ahead and include the link uh, to uh, slime finder uh, chunk base uh, the website down in the description go ahead and click on that link and put your seed in and your addition regardless if it's Java or bedrock or whatever it'll go ahead and let you know where all the slimes are in your world and then that way you can actually take your uh, your map with you if you're inside of one of those slime chunks instead of torches you're gonna take slabs and you're gonna slab off the entire thing because slimes don't uh, spawn on slabs they will still spawn where there's torches though so unfortunately you're gonna have to watch out for that and uh, once you're done doing that if you've got everything lit up and you've got all the slime chunks all slabbed off and you've done the x-ray glitch and you know that every single cave is well lit then that's about all you can do to possibly make sure that your farm is completely prepared However, if you've prepared a perimeter for yourself because you blew everything up in 120 blocks around you, then all you have to do is light up the floor and slab off the slime chunks on the floor level. You don't want any slime spawning at all. So uh, once you've done that too, uh, you'll also need to extend this wall up. Uh, I figured that most people would just be digging out a straight hole, and this would be a giant stone wall naturally right here. And if that's not so for you because you've cleared everything out, you're going to have to build a wall there with blocks of your choice. You can choose slabs if you like, like I've done over there or it can be glass, whatever you choose, it doesn't really matter. So 
uh, that's something that you'll have to do too if you prepare the perimeter. Uh, also, over here, like I was saying earlier, uh, don't forget that in the end of the video, on the end screen, I will include a link to my storage solution uh, video for shulker boxes. And as you can see, uh, chest just simply isn't going to do it. There's items just stacking up in there, so that's not going to cut it. But uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and include that. Also, for the uh, fire resistance potion that I mentioned earlier in the cave lighting, I have a potion brewer tutorial that I'll go ahead and include on the end screen as well. So I'll include the soccer box storage solutions and the uh, potion brewer for you guys on the end screen. But other than that, that is the best way to optimize a single layer platform like this. Like I said, it, it fills up the mob cap and it dispenses them and, and gets rid of all the mobs, kills them off, you get all everything, and it works really well. So, with that being said, I hope you guys really did enjoy the tutorial. If you did, please remember to hit that like button, and if you really enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe, and as always, share this video with all your friends. I am Broken Bones, and I will see you guys next time.